In this segment, I'm going to show you how to piece together a 2.4 GHz video scanner. Now, I in no way take any kind of credit for even thinking of putting this thing together. It's just one of those, I, have, I had the right parts, I put it together, and it worked. A couple of other individuals that like to MacGyver the situation have done the same. So, I'm going to show you the basics of how to put it together. Other IPTV shows and other articles online show you how to put the system together, but they don't explain it too much, and the cost of it, way too absurd for my taste. And the way they put it together, none of the parts are reusable, so you know, you're going to go and sink a significant amount of money to a one-time use project that's probably going to lose its fun after a couple of months. Anyway, into the materials. The main key is a 2.4 gigahertz video scanner. Well, technically it's a receiver. Some units actually have an auto-scan feature, which this model happen has, happens to have. I would definitely look for that feature, otherwise you're going to have to build a circuit to automatically scan through the channels, which means you'll have to take the unit apart, open up, uh, remove the selector switch, put some wires coming off the selector switch, and create a third-party schematic, which, eh, I'll design, maybe I'll, if you guys pester me enough, I'll design one and I'll put it on the, uh, put it on the website or something, put it in the show notes. All receivers operate on the same frequency. Yeah, they're all 2.4 gigahertz receivers. It doesn't matter what brand you have. All cameras operate on the four same frequencies every single time. It doesn't matter what brand you get. You can get X10, you can get Lorex, you can get Radio Shack, you can get Tandy, you can get what the hell ever no-name brand. The, um, the main thing about it is your antenna type. Now this has some junk built-in antenna, but you don't even have to worry about spending extra money to get an antenna jack. Later on I'll show you how to put your own antenna jack in. This actually cost me $40, and it also came with a 2.4 GHz infrared wireless black and white camera. For $40, the camera alone will sell for like 80 bucks. So, I make money in this one. Um, expect to spend between $40 and $80 for a receiver. After that, you're going to need some kind of screen, any kind of screen. Not any kind of screen. You're going to need a, a screen that accepts a composite input. Now, we might, you might be familiar with my 5-inch game screen, which I've showcased on the IR Vision, um, modified to have standard AV inputs. I'm not going to explain how to basically add connectors to a screen. Leave that for the forums, IRC, and show notes. Of course, I've also got the Game Boy Advance with the video input cartridge. Uh, not the best screen, but it's portable. You can also use portable DVD players. Um, this is a 4-inch portable DVD player. I added on an extended battery pack, and it's got a video input. And so does this little, uh, little baby right here. This screen will probably run you between $40 to $60. If you can actually find the video cartridge for the Game Boy Advance, it'll probably run you between 30, uh, $25 to $35. Um, DVD players, yeah, I don't know, between $80 to $300, depending on how much you want to sink into it. If you actually have problems with finding screens in your area, or even on the internet, peg me on IRC or peg me on, on the forums, and I'll give you some great ways of finding compatible screens. Um, you cannot use digital screens, so you can't say, oh, but I have a used laptop panel or a flat panel. You can't use them because they're a digital signal. You need something that requires a composite signal. There's no way around that. Don't bother. Your cell phone won't work. Your used uh, flat panel for your monitor won't work. What you could do is, if you do have a laptop, go get a USB capture box, Velcro it to the top, and Velcro your, this to, your, uh, to, your, to the top of your laptop as well, so when you're out war driving, you can, all, you can see your, um, your Wi-Fi signals as well as your video signals side by side, which is something else I have to, I have to warn you about. This operates at the same exact frequency range as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, microwave ovens, and cordless phones. This is a very, very crowded frequency band, so expect signal problems without the appropriate equipment. You're also going to need the appropriate battery. Now, this device says it's supposed to be run from 9 volts. This screen says it's supposed to be run from 12 volts, but in fact, I can run them both from 7.5. I can plug this 7.5 volt, 3,300 milliamp hour battery into both my screen and my receiver, and essentially there's a portable unit right there. Um, I'm not going to get into batteries and whatnot. I actually explained some of this in the, uh, the infrared vision in a previous episode. Again, I'll put some stuff in the show notes about batteries and what to get. By the way, these are nickel metal hydroxides. I would stick with nickel metal hydroxide, they're the best for homebrew, and, and I guess beginner and intermediate electronics people. Do not go with NICADs. Um, try to stay away from lithium ion, lithium ion, they get to be kind of PMS-y when it comes to heat and recharging. Okay, once you have a screen, once you have a video scanner, once you have a battery, it's just a matter of powering the screen, powering the scanner, and then hooking it all up. 
So because my screen has standard uh, video connector and so does my video receiver, all I have to do is plug this in and there's the video signal of the camera I have right next to my rabbit's cage. Vicariously looking at long flocked ears. Indigenous and hairy. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Here, uh, you want to go and plug it into a, a DVD player? Go get the appropriate hookup cables. I mean, I'm automatically assuming you understand which end of a, of, a, of a soldering iron to hold. I mean, you should know that button there. There you go. Um, another thing that you can use, I don't know if I mentioned it, I do have a, a short-term memory problem. Your camcorder. A lot of camcorders nowadays actually allow you to plug the, a video signal when you put it into VCR mode. You can plug the video signal into the camera and then use the camera to record. Now, a little bit about law. This is an unlicensed frequency band, meaning anyone can transmit and anyone can receive as long as they don't go above a certain power output. But since you're receiving, no one cares. Well, they will care if you're recording um, a camera feed and publicly broadcasting it. In the United States, that is a crime. So if you want to go and use your camcorder, which I honestly think is a foolish idea because your camcorder is probably going to run at least 250 bucks. $250 for a camcorder, you got, say, $30 for the receiver, and then probably another 20 bucks for the battery, that's more money right there than I'm willing to break in one shot. I'd much rather go and break something a little bit less important than my camcorder. But if you're going around and you're peeking into people's bedrooms and peeking into their security cameras and their baby monitors, um, and you actually record it, to my knowledge in the United States, that's not a crime. However, playing it back is. And broadcasting it is definitely an offense. So if you go and pick up some kind of like you know frisky encounters of the third furry kind, and you record it, and you dump it to your computer, and you put it on YouTube, yeah, expect to get in a little bit of trouble about that. But if you're just walking around and, and peeking into people's security cameras, albeit it could be morally incorrect, I'm not teaching you morals here, you know, there's no Patrick human stupidity if you don't realize that your wireless camera in your bedroom is broadcasting a signal to the entire neighborhood. That's, that's your problem that you didn't realize that. And hopefully in this segment, now you do. So, um... I've actually gone around my neighborhood and I've actually went into shop, shops and stores and I've actually showed the store owners that their camera, albeit was easy to hook up, that they don't realize that they're broadcasting the whereabouts of the shop owner and all the people in the store at all times wirelessly. They don't even turn off the camera so when they close up the shop, you can use this to peek inside and see if anyone's in there to rob the place. Once they made that aware to the people, they went and got wired cameras or paid me to wire up new cameras. So, um couple of times I was actually expected to get shot in the face, but, you know, you've been warned. So, receiving, cool. What you see might not be cool, so keep it to yourself. I've actually picked up bathroom cams, hidden bedroom cameras, um, uh, parents beating their children unmercifully, um, uh, nannies not uh, tending to, to uh, infants appropriately. I don't mean molesting, it's just the kid was screaming his head off, probably hungry or something, and, and a nanny was just sitting there on YouTube or MySpace or something, I couldn't tell. So... Piece it together. Let me know what you say, as long as it's it's legitimate.